sign your name. Sign your name just like Publishers Clearing House is at your house at 3 o'clock in the morning and it's going on a check. I promise I won't cut and paste it on anything. I have three questions. Number one, could you do that pretty easy? Yeah? Was it pretty effortless? Yeah? Was it fast? Yes? And if I cut and paste it on, on the back of a check, would I possibly be able to cash it? Yes? Do me a favor and change hands. Do the same thing. <laughs> okay, three questions again. Was it harder? Yeah, yes. Again. Did it take more time? Yeah. Tell me your first name. Yeah. I'm Valerie. Hi, Valerie. And third question, is it not quite so pretty? Yeah. Would I add, get asked for ID if I took it to the bank to cash it? Yeah. Here's what I have found. People that are like us, people that we get, people that we understand, when we communicate them with them, it's like writing with our dominant hand. It's when we deal with people who are different from us, difficult when we deal with them, that it's like writing with our non-dominant hand. It takes more time, it takes way more effort, and the results are not as pretty. Would you agree with all of that? Would you also agree that if we did nothing else for the rest of the day, but practiced writing your signature with your non-dominant hand, there's a good chance that you might get better at it by the end of the day. Would you agree with that? That's the key we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to put some tools in your toolbox to arm you with the skills to have better, prettier, faster, deeper, more meaningful relationships. Does that sound good? Excellent. Before we begin, let me talk about the three key breakdowns in communication. And we're going to have a tool for you to take home to combat each of these. Number one breakdown in communication, you might want to write this down, is we assume. We assume. And there's a lot of acronyms I'm going to give you today. That's, there is one for that I'm not allowed to give you. <laughs> so we don't want to assume. Second, I'll tell you fast and then I'll say it slow. We think things that people think that they don't think at all. We think things that people think that they don't think at all. And communication breaks down. My husband walks in, and he's got the face. And I'm sure it's about me. And I, I get kind of antsy, and I think, why is he mad at me? Well, I can come up with 27 reasons. He can usually only come up with three. <laughs> and so by 7 o'clock at night, I've got that list ready, and I say, you know, you have no right to be mad at me. You're mad because, -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, and I give the whole list. And he looks at me and he says, I'm not mad at you. And I said, oh, yes, you are. I know the face. How many people have gone through this? <laughs> so you have the face. He said, that, I'm not mad at you. And I said, well, what are you mad at? He said, we couldn't deliver an aircraft at 5 o'clock because the service bulletin wasn't ready. And I said, oh, disregard everything I just said. Would you like <laughs> chocolate cake with that? <laughs> See, we make it about us. So there's an acronym, Q-TIP, Q-T-I-P. Quit taking it personally. It is not about us, right? And the third one is that we don't say what we mean, we don't mean what we say, or we say it mean. So let me give you an example. We don't say what we mean. I got an, I got an email this morning, 5 o'clock, and it said, please sign and return this contract at your earliest convenience. Anybody ever got one like that? Now i got to tell you, I'm going on a flight home tonight. I am doing a Just Dance party for eight-year-olds tomorrow. Wasn't that insane? Eight of them. <laughs> Sunday, we've got a whole day planned of tobogganing. Great license to scream at the top of your lungs. Wonderful cathartic therapy. And on Monday or Tuesday, I'm out again on a flight. So my earliest convenience is next Wednesday. Now, I'm sure that when that person sent that email this morning, she expected that contract signed back by noon. But if she wanted it by noon, she should have said noon. We don't say what we mean, right? We say at your earliest convenience and then go, how come I haven't got it right yet, right? The second thing we do is we don't mean what we say. Tell me if any of you have ever gone through this. You go into the office and somebody says, can you take on this new project? No, 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 I can't. I'm full. I'm like stressed out to the max. I, can't, I don't have any more time. And... And no, I, I'm done. Really, can you help us out? You know, we really don't. Oh, give me the thing, I'll do it. 
Anybody ever suffered from that? And the problem is that people come back around to us again and ask us again, and, and we lose it on them, don't we? What? You don't think I have a life? I got a life. You know, I'm stressed out to the max. I got all these projects going. And they say, but I don't understand. You said yes last time. See, we don't say what we mean. I said no, but I did yes. And our actions have to be congruent with our words. So we assume, we think things that people think that they don't think at all, and we don't say what we mean. We don't mean what we say. Or lastly, we say it mean. And, and the environment that we go through when we say it mean is four things. We're either tired, we're hungry, we're sick, or we're hormonal. Now, I teach men and women courses, and I have to tell you that men typically look down, but they know, they know. She's happy, everybody's happy. She's not happy, run, right? So four environments, and what we need to be aware of is that when we're in those environments, we need to keep ourselves in check. We need to not react to the things that we might likely normally react poorly to. And there's a difference between taking a break, cooling off, or taking a break and then coming back and dealing with the issue at hand. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to write down the difference. Coping mechanism equals cost. Communication skill equal, equals reward. When we use a tool in a healthy way that we've practiced over and over and over again, we get the reward of healing the relationship. We get the good, bad, and the ugly, right? But in good ratios. Everybody's a combination of good, and bad, and ugly. Some people have more ugly than we'd like, right? But when we use a coping mechanism, I ask people so often, you know, how do you deal with that difficult person at work? And they say, I don't. I deal with his assistant, I deal with his coworker, I, I deal with his boss, I don't deal with him. And the problem is that when we remove that person completely, we take out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, we get rid of the bad and the ugly, but we lose the value of the good. So if we can find ways to heal those relationships and take the good and minimize the bad and ugly, we've got a new, a new tool in our toolbox. You know, for throughout the day, um, I have professional skills. The goal is to help you professionally move ahead in your profession. But I have to tell you that without fail, at the end of every day, on break and at lunch, somebody comes up to me and says, you know, my real problem here today is I haven't talked to my sister in three years. Or I have somebody come up and say, I can't connect with my 17-year-old son. Or somebody else that says, you know, I, I just can't seem to make it work. I'm going to have to leave the job I love. See, it's not about the professional day-to-day -day interactions. It's the, it's the personal ones that he hurt our heart. We're holistic beings. And when we're at work, we're worrying about home. And when we're at home, we're worried about work. So today, if you can walk out the door with just one extra tool in your toolbox that helps you have more assertiveness and deeper, more meaningful relationships, I will have hit my goal.